I'm Ozzy Griffin, and this is a quick review of uh, Josh and Me, um, the How Hard Can It Be by Richard M. O'Brien. Uh, he was nice enough to send me a copy, so I'm going to give him uh, the full benefit of my experience and knowledge. And just so I've said it, I am a volunteer editor over at Mind Pedals Publishing, and I know for a fact that uh, those guys will basically... Um, love to get the free press however they always um have taught they taught me how to be an editor uh, in a lot of respects so i will be a little critical of this however that is how you get the best results out of a book now first of all uh on a technical note there were a couple of um sentence structure failures uh one case where serve was used instead of severe um and once since I think I've balls up in the whole thing. Aside from that, there's one or two, just some tetchy moments where it should be you know, like comma space, you know, whatever. I see that all the time. Most editors miss it on the, in a second or third read through. It happens. Um, I'm just detail oriented like that. So that's the technical out of the way. Um, now I liked how uh, the place, like the Jasper switch, was described as a real. It's a very authentic sounding country town, and if you know anything, uh, my father actually grew up in one uh, called Warrigal here in Victoria. And he'll tell you, uh, when it comes to the locals helping each other out, um, believe me, there is no end to the kindness uh, they can display. Uh, though they will usually ask to be repaid a cost, which is something uh, I thought could have been done, a, um, something I'll touch on in a bit. Now... Uh, the characters came off as beautifully written, very authentic. The dialogue they were credited with was absolutely natural. Uh, so, love that. Uh, the book's style is written in compartmentalized adventures, uh, like that, very much so. Very good if you want to um, get, you know, give a chapter or two out uh, to a school class who are maybe only. Uh, in, uh, third or fourth grade. Now, when it comes to uh, the, the style of writing, it's told very much as a story. I consider this to actually be a story book. Um, I just, and I just think it's just a story book that uses words instead of pictures. And the fact that it's under a hundred pages of actual story, maybe a little more or less if you include the preface that sets up the, um, sets up the whole scene, uh, that actually is great for teachers because they like, like something that's light to read. Anyway, so basically after that, you've got a, um, you've got a great, like, it's a great story, good dynamics, good narrative. Uh, and I think that it really, it really reflects well, uh, with the other characters. Now, onto things that I would change, uh, I would add a bit more of the, love you, love you back more thing, uh, just to help characterize things. Uh, I'd explain the setup of the town a little better, uh, because you mentioned it briefly that it's a, uh, rural town. However, you don't really explain just in passing the philosophy that guided the town's setup. Uh, so, because most people have never seen a parade float Okay, most people have never seen a parade float go out of control. However, most people have never seen one crash into someone's front yard since they're usually not used outside of city limits. So, for illustrating how that dynamic works, a couple of cursory sentences, maybe one or two, would just seal the deal. Uh, what else was there? Yeah, there was... I definitely... Uh, have accented that they, you know, one mention here or there of them leaving stuff at the other's house um, might have, you know, might have changed things a bit. Uh, I thought the uh, Orchard debacle, Orchard debacle, by, I thought it was one story too many. It, and I mean this in the nicest possible way. Don't get me wrong, it was beautifully written. Um, the only downside really there was that it kind of became predictable and you could kind of see it coming. A bit the same with um, the Fireman's Day thing. You could see it coming. The pickled stuff you could see coming, however, uh, it sort of felt in place. Um, that's just how I saw it. 
Now, I did like the ending. I'm going to try and, you know, not give too much away. Suffice it to say, it was beautifully done and the reactions were nice. I would have thought, though, that by this time, uh, by the Orchard debacle or even the Fireman's Day um, parade, there would have been a minder or a watcher keeping an eye on Josh. You know, the kind of guy who, even if he says, oh, it's a secret plan, will check everything he's done to make sure there's no explosives uh, being involved. Like, when they were talking about rebuilding the wall of the church uh, after the fireworks display, it was a beautiful allusion to another plan gone wrong. Uh, so... Could I have made it shorter? Yes, though I'm an editor, it is actually a job I do, it's sort of second nature. Could I have made it better? Uh, probably not. Probably not. Uh, I, I would have fixed some of the technical issues. However, ultimately, I think that for a teacher in a classroom, this is a great book to read off one or two stories uh, for a... What do you call it? For a teacher who wants to discuss... Uh, death with some of her older students, maybe grade five, grade six, uh, or even having a grade f three or four student there with a grade five or a grade six student uh, to discuss that with them. Uh, this is a great text to have with. It doesn't take the morbid, um, fatalistic view of some death education programs, and it really doesn't, and it really is. Um, quite uplifting in the way it's presented. So, Josh and Me, great storybook, uh, works for people of any age. In fact, I'm going to run it past my mother and see what she thinks. Uh, and I basically think that aside from maybe bal balancing out uh, one or two issues uh, with, the f with the flow of one chapter as in terms of the whole book, it's pretty much perfect. Uh, I would, and I do think it has potential to be turned into a, a two-part miniseries on TV if I was doing that sort of thing. The secret is using, uh, there's a great bit in the second or third chapter, I've forgotten which, where they describe tying the children together with the ducks and they're fiddling with a camera, getting photo, having a running theme of photographs through the story of their misadventures uh, would probably... Oh, and also showing their aging and how the time passed a bit more would probably have been uh, probably have given a greater sense of perspective because you do at some points feel like it's just one disaster on top of another and people should have really locked them up for their own good at some point. So, and though it does have a bit of continuity between chapters, I do like that. Uh, as you can probably tell. So... Aside, aside from that, if it ever does get put onto TV uh, or into a movie, using the still frame shots will be absolutely hilarious, and I believe, with the ending you gave it, absolutely touching. Anyway, I hope this has been accurate. If you want a list of the technical um, additions that I'd make, as in sentence structure and uh, yeah things like that, uh, just give me a shout and I'll send you a PM with all of them. Anyway, I'm Ozzy Griffin. This is Josh and Me by Richard M. O'Brien. A great read, uh, especially if you've got young kids um, who have, want to have a laugh or parents who want to have a chuckle. Anyway, have a good one.